Hey guys, today I am going to tell you what financial move you should be making or if you're just a casual player. Right now, Ikoya is not very interesting. Ikoya is not a very strong set in my opinion. Yes, it has some Godzilla cards which are interesting, but as a collector's booster or even core 2021, Double Masters, VIP Double Masters at $100 a pack, uh, $90 if you purchase it under a subscription model, I guess. Uh, those are very expensive products. And when you talk about uh, value for your dollar, the current booster boxes, Core 2021, Pharos Beyond Death, Ikoria, Throne of the Elder, the current boxes in standard are very low. Expected value should you open one of these boxes is around $40 retail or less. So it will be time for a better set to come out with a better value. And I think that set will be Zendikar. Uh, the original Zendikar was kind of a, a mess. Uh, because they had the uh, treasure prices. You could pull a Black Lotus from it. Um, but people didn't really know, they didn't really advertise that for whatever reason, that if you had the first printing, you could pull a hidden treasure. Which is crazy, right? I mean, obviously those first printing boxes are much more valuable because they could in hold. And I, I did see this myself. One of my friends at the time, I was in, I was I think in law school, yeah, I think I was in law school at the time, and one of my friends opened a box, and there was uh, candles of Count Candelara. And I was like, oh, what's going on here? And that was amazing. Uh, to, and we didn't really know what was going on until then we went online, and we saw that other people had been pulling older cards as well. And so the advertising on that was a mess. Otherwise, they would have sold those first print boxes would have sold for so much more than, you know, second print or third print or whatever many prints. Now, Zendikar definitely was a very fun time, and the fetch lands made it very valuable. I mean, the fetch lands were incredibly valuable, but it made sense because they had that landfall mechanic. I played, like, the step links, and that was, like, the best thing ever was get out your links, uh, crack it, you know, make it pump it and then go aggro on it. That was one of my favorite decks at the time. So, and then Lotus Cobra and, you know, a lot of fun cards. But the land mechanic made sense because, you know, drawing land or putting land in play, land entering the battlefield was very important. Now, when they did return to Zendikar, battle for Zendikar, that was really bad. There was no fetch lands, there wasn't any really land mechanics, and the reason a land mechanic feels so good is typically a land is just a land, there's no interaction, there's, it's kind of like a boring card if you will, but the way that the landfall, not the way the original Zendikar set was designed, lands could be more than land. Your creatures or spell, whatever, it, it triggers based on how many land you put in play, and when you put them in play. So Fetch Land's at instant speed. Now, instead of just being an extra land, it can have an effect on a creature. So that was a very fun time in Magic the Gathering. Probably one of the most... That was when I was thinking about being a competitive Magic player. Now, did I ever get close? No. But I did have the JSD Mind Sculptor deck at the time, which was the Tier 1 competitor deck. Jace was selling for $100 plus. When I look at sets, and I look at the value of sets, it's all dependent on the land base. Kanja Tarkir, you may remember it fondly, but it was not a very powerful set. The most, I think the most expensive Mythic is under $4. And Hardened Scale and Alter the Brood, they're EDH cards that were bulk rares that became valuable as EDHs and as other new commanders came out. But at the time, they were not valuable. Hardened Scales was a deck even back then, but it's gotten better. So you have five fetch lands. Uh, had they not reprinted Windswept Heath again in a supplementary product, I think Windswept Heath would also be over $20. It's $17 now, $16.99. 
But the second, if they had not reprinted Windswept Heath again, I think all five fetch lands right now uh, are over $20. Windswept Heath is the only one that is not currently. Now, fetch lands is, if you ask Magic players, what do they want? They want fetch lands. They want fetch lands in a standard product. I don't think they make the mistake again that they made on Zendikar Battle for Zendikar. That was a pretty big mistake. A lot of people were disappointed. And yes, there were fetch lands in the Mythic of Mythics, the expeditions. So I guess you could have pulled a fetch land in a very, very small amount. But they know that fetch lands sell product. Um, look at Constant Con Tarkirs again, terrible set, very weak. Um, you can look at the price point today. It did not stand the test of time. As soon as they rotate it out, things start plummeting, and they've never really stopped plummeting in price. Zenkar, if they put the Fetz lands, it will be very similar to Conjunct Tarkir in terms of sealed boxes, sealed bundles, uh, used to be called fat packs, and that makes sense to me. That's something that you definitely want in a product. So I like products that have very good rares, I like products that have rares as land that are over $10, $15, Because that makes sense to me. That if you open a booster pack, there is the possibility that you have a $20 card in it. That feels good. The whole mythic, I've never agreed with the mythic rarity. I've always found, felt that that was kind of crazy that they had this new mythic rarity. Back when I was playing, you know, I we didn't have mythics. We just had rares. So every rare had the same chance of being in your pack. So, I mean, the boxes were just more fun to open, in my opinion, instead of chasing the mythic. And I really do not like sets where the most valuable card, like Euro, is a mythic because it feels bad. You can open a whole case and not even get that one mythic. But there's no way you open a whole case and not get a rare. You're going to get multiples of it. So, people, you know, very large box openers have stopped opening boxes. Uh, even Rudy from Alpha Investments, he used to open Battle for Zendikar. He opened a bunch of boxes, and then he would show you distribution. Now he opens other people's boxes. He doesn't open boxes for himself because he knows, and I know, and everyone knows, there's no value in opening boxes. Like, what is the value of opening boxes? even collector's boxes and VIP boxes, selling singles is really, really difficult during COVID. I don't think people realize how difficult it is to sell Magic cards right now. Um, yes, if you are a big name, a big YouTuber, a big company like Channel Fireball or Amazon, you will do well. But if you're a local game store, you don't have the capital to buy a $100 VIP pack to resell. You don't have the capital. So the way that many of these stores work is they sell the new set, flip it, immediately flip it for whatever they can flip it at, and then they get cash. They use the cash flow to buy the upcoming set, to put a deposit on the upcoming set. But based on the lack of cash flow, it's a lot different selling Magic cards than it's ever been. It's not as easy as you would think it would be. And I would say it's never that easy. You have to ship it. You have to track it. You have to deal with returns. You have to be customer service. You have to do all these things that people rarely ever mention when you have when you sell cards. Now, I know a lot of you will say, oh, I sell this, I sell... But the market is so different now. I mean, you're selling the same card can have five or six different versions of it. And you need a playset to really make the profit, to make the shipping worth it, right? You don't want to send out a bunch of single cards. You're going to get hoes in the shipping, especially if you offer free shipping. So back to um, the core problem. There's too many products, and you probably don't have that much money now because of COVID. And even the unemployment bonus is running out. And... As a government, as a financial institution, I don't think the U.S. government can just continue to give people free money. That seems like kind of weird that 
you know, they can't continue just to bail out companies and eventually at some point uh, China will call its loan in and say, hey, well, I don't like where this is going. Give me my loan back. I love the idea of Zendikar. Now, if they don't have Fetch lands, I will be very, very angry. But I like the idea of a set with five Fetch lands. It does, it literally does not matter what any other card in the set is. If you buy this box, keep it sealed, open it, whatever, you're going to be okay. There are very few booster boxes like this. Uh, Zendikar is one of them. Innistrad was one of them at the time. Um, the original Zendikar was one, of course, uh, very, very good. Constant Care was another one of them. And it all depends on the land. 100% depending on land. If these five fetch lands are in this product, this will be the best product of 2020. And trust me, Wizard Coast is going to want to sell the blank out of this product. Hi, guys.